from there, I went to SIU Carbondale, Southern Illinois University. Ooh, you talk about a little bit more culture shock. Now, this is north of Nashville, northwest. But SIU was an interesting place and still is. There's two campuses, but I went to the Carbondale campus. And I got there right after a protest and Old Main, which was the main administrative building, had been burned down. The Black Panther Party was organizing in, in Southern Illinois. And Reverend Chuck Cohen was having demonstrations every Saturday morning in Cairo, which was a throwback to the South. Much, much, I had never seen anything like Cairo in my life, and I had, was born and raised in the South. Really segregated, really poor, looked like what you've seen, what you think of when you think of some of the rural Mississippi towns or those associated with the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, black folks were really segregated, they were poor, but they were kept in those positions. They were called names and everything else. I never was called out of my name until I was an adult, ever. My father and mother sheltered me a lot. In, in Illinois, which is north of... Right. In the South, in Nashville, never called the N-word, never any of that. But when I get to Southern Illinois, it was almost a daily occurrence. So a number of us would go to Cairo on Saturday mornings to demonstrate with Reverend Cohen. I'm in graduate school in community development. At this point, this is my first real time away from home. Uh, and it was an interesting experience. I met the Black Panthers. I met the advocates in Carbondale. Carbondale was the upscale university town. And even the blacks in the poor section or the black section of Carbondale were upscale. Cairo was not. So we were going down to do that. We also did work at Menard Federal Prison because Carbondale had a, pro I mean, the university had a program there. So we'd go there and we were working with African-American male prisoners trying to help them get their GED or go to school. And that was at the time, you know, prisoners could take courses and actually go to school while they were in prison. So we were going over there on alternate Saturdays or Thursdays or whatever. So it was an interesting life. That was really the life probably where I probably became more of an advocate than any other time. Reverend Cohen would get up every morning, every Saturday morning and do, do this sermon. And by the way, he was just a gorgeous man <laughs> who had a, a, a velvet tongue, if you will. So some of us were there and we'd listen to him. And then sometimes he'd come into Carbondale and we'd go to Judy and Riff's house. Now, Judy and Riff were from New York, the original New York, go south, get a, de get a degree. And they were in graduate school and working for the university. But they became sort of our surrogate leaders uh, in the process. So we always go to Riff and Judy's house to figure out what we were doing and where we needed to go. And if Are we, they African Americans? They were African Americans, mm -hmm. yes. They were married, had three gorgeous little girls. So we were all family. We were really all family. We were, most of us were graduate students, but they were undergraduates. Uh, I was in the teacher corps at the time when I first went there, and then I went, changed over to community development. So Carbondale was interesting. I was in Carbondale from July of 1969 to April of 1970, I think April is the, is, it was April or May. It coincides with the issues at Kent State and the deaths there. Let's talk about Kent State a little mm -hmm. bit. What was, tell, tell that story. Of Kent well, State Kent State involved demonstrations of students on the campus. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it involved the shootings of some of those students and issues around their demonstrating. Uh, and everything else, and all the other universities around the country then became what you'd call literally time bombs waiting to explode. So many of the universities closed as a result of that. There's demonstrations uh, generally around the war mm -hmm. at this point Vietnam. in time, Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, maybe some other social issues, but most of it was around Vietnam. Most of these students were white, and most of these were the major universities. The civil rights movement at this point is not that hot and heavy in, in 69, 70. There were a few issues, but not many. Dr. King now has been dead for two years when Kent State occurs. Uh, and I remember Carbondale also had something else going. They had something called the Kappa Carnival. Kappa Alpha Psi, one of the largest African-American fraternities, would have a huge event in Carbondale every April or May. And literally the town would transform itself. Carbondale also had the largest number of African-American students on a, uh, his, on, a, on a white campus in the country. So it wasn't a small black population, it was a large black population of students. I think there was 
probably as many African-American students in Carbondale as there was at Tennessee State. Okay. <laughs> there was about 4,000 students at TSU and about 4,000 at uh, Carbondale who were African-Americans. So I remember that. I remember them uh, coming down and that was a really, really kind of a, a thing that says, oh, what are we going to do now? So they closed school. Kent State had closed, major universities all over, so Carbondale closed the week, be, week or two before the um, Kappa Carnival because so, they didn't want people coming into town because uh, they thought there would be a riot. Now, they weren't going to riot. They were just partying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the distinction of going to the two partying schools in the nation <laughs> as, 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 uh, as named by Playboy magazine in 1969. One of them was Tennessee State. The other was Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. So I always tell people that every once in a while. So that was, it was an interesting time. We had a lot of fun, but we were doing a lot of activist advocacy work. And then we worked with the reading program that the Black Panther Party had in Carbondale. Another thing in Carbondale was I sat with Fred Hampton in November of 1969 in Riff and Judy's house. He had spoken on the university campus about the issues of what they were doing in Chicago, what the, what the Black Panther Party was doing. And by December the 5th, Fred was dead. The police had shot him. And that's a major incident, the shooting of Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton. And, and other and, brother yeah. when they and shot Mark him in the Clark, apartment. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but Fred was there and we sat there and talked to Fred. He sat in the same chair. Riff and Judy had a rocking chair, so when, anytime anybody important came in, whether they were academics or not, they would sit in that chair and we'd sit there and we'd listen to them as they rocked.